Uh, welcome to the regular uh, Jenkins configuration as code uh, project meeting. And today is April 22nd, and uh, we are going uh, to discuss the project status, ongoing development, and recent news in the Jenkins configuration as code area. So basically, we will be running uh, the standard agenda. And we have a number of participants on the call. So thanks uh, to everyone for joining. Okay, so what do we have in our agenda for today? Mm, so we've got some news, especially about the breaking changes in the Jenkins core. So team, uh, would you like to summarize them? Yep. Um, so there was a change in Jenkins core to um, remove the JavaX annotations for detecting nullability. Um, it turned out that the configurations code plugin was um, was pulling those um, annotations from Jenkins core, um, which caused um, configurations code to completely break. If in in most in many cases, um, an example being credentials, but many other ways that it could, could just completely blow up and stop working. Um, we shipped a quick fix um, on the day we found it. Um, and we've got a um, cleaner fix um, coming soon. Um, we basically re-added the annotations in configuration as code temporarily, um, and we've got a follow-up pull request to remove them, um, but didn't want to have to do the testing at the same time, just wanted to uh, get the emergency fix out. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that, we have, uh, so Jenkins 226 um, changed the layout on the config on the manage page to have categories. Um, and if you didn't specify one, you went right to the bottom and uncategorized. Um, so now we've set it so that um, we're in a category um, and we're further up the top now. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that, um, I'm sure there might've been a couple of other minor changes in the release notes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just a second, I'm opening it on my screen. Uh, yeah. Uh, some Java doc improvements and some Q&A to the new issue dialogue. So that's a recommendation to try and bring questions to the uh, GitHub chat first before opening a GitHub issue. Yeah, we are using a new feature which is, uh, became available in GitHub a couple of months ago. So. Now you see Gitter chat here. And uh, if you want to add something else, it's uh, ultimately possible. So if you're a plugin maintainer, you can uh, add even more links, for example, uh, link into your special interest group channels like mailing list and whatever. So yeah, it's quality of life improvement for maintainers. And it just requires editing another YAML file. Okay, uh, thank you for this overview. Another JCAST related news that yesterday we had online meetup. Uh, there we had a presenter uh, from Ficode Pragma who talked about uh, how to use configuration as code uh, together with Kubernetes. It includes the JCAST plugin, also integrations with job DSL, also uh, Helm as infrastructure as code layer. So if you're interested, uh, for some example, how to run a uh, JCAST in practice, you can take a look at uh, this online meetup. And the recording is already published. And speaking of that, I have a topic uh, for later about other meetups and blog posts, but yep, we can discuss it later during the basic meeting. Okay, any other news uh, we are missing? I believe we had some uh, recent uh, GCAS compatibility patches in the Jenkins core, thanks to team. Yeah, so there was administrative monitors um, has support and it was very nice because I used it the next day. Um, yep. And there's um, uh, there's been a couple of ones related to um, time zone and SSH authorized keys um, for the local security realm. Um, mm -hmm. So time zones uh, are here. Um, yep. Yeah, SSH authorized keys might not be there because it came in as a it's a 
library dependency of mm -hmm. Jenkins Core. So I think it's uh, still uh, there. Yeah. Uh, we usually do that. Yeah, allow okay. SSH authorized keys to be configured uh, with Jenkins configuration as code. It was just sure. one month ago. So we usually put uh, dependencies here as well, uh, especially when uh, there is a change visible to Jenkins users. So in other related news, HashiCorp Vault plugin uh, has support for full path to the secrets. So there's this, the wish to access the full path because you might have a, a multi-team setup where you have the same secrets in different paths. So it's nice to resolve in the in different paths, basically. Yeah, Azure Key Vault um, secret source resolver was released a few weeks ago, I think. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm. HashiCorp Vault. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this one. So yeah, here we get uh, alt full pass variables to JCASC secrets. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a nice improvement. Okay. Thank you. And here we have a uh, time uh, zone property uh, for users. So then SSH auth keys. And the third one was update uh, administrative monitors. Yeah. Okay. So anything else about uh, the news? Yeah, there's um, Azure Key Vault secret source resolver. Sorry. In Azure storage, no, no, right? No, Azure, it's in the Azure key vault, it's just Azure dash K. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, two to zero. <laughs> Sounds mm, promising. It, it was released in like 1.9 or so, but 2.0 mm -hmm. is to fix a, um, mm -hmm. a resource leakage, uh, but we had <clears> to <throat> change SDKs which mm -hmm. they didn't behave the same. Okay. It's, yeah, anyway, it's a great improvement, especially, for example, for CI Jenkins IO and other instances uh, which are run in Asia, because now we could consume these features. Okay. Well, yeah, quite a number of news. And I believe there are more JCAS compatibility patches happening in the background here and there. I definitely know that Adrian uh, has uh, released a new version of Mailer plugin a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was the email. Um, there, was, there was a couple of fixes in Mailer, I think. There was the, um, yeah, the, the TLS property that was uh, not. Uh, uh, configurable um, because of um, a Pojo issue. Uh, so yeah, it was a, a quick uh, 132 uh, to fix that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. There's also configuring the user's email address for the local security realm as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So, yeah, we have got uh, quite a list here. And yeah, thanks a lot to everyone who is working on JCASC support. Not, uh, yeah, there is uh, there's a lot of other changes here and there, but even this list is really impressive. Okay, so should we talk about ongoing development? Mm -hmm. And the first item for us is of course system read permission. So how is it going team? Um, 
Good-ish, but slowly. Um, so plugin manager and tool configuration got merged last weekish, I think. I think plugin manager is in the latest weekly and possibly tool in the one before that. Um, Mm. So that's great because plugin manager was a big one so that people could see um, what versions of plugins were installed and what updates were available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I'll see. Also tool configurations. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's actually, yeah, I'm just looking for other items. So basically we are on track uh, to have something pretty useful uh, in the next release, right? Uh, uh, next LTS. Yeah, next LTS. Yeah. So we yeah. will have uh, LTS baseline selection uh, in two weeks, and yeah, by these two weeks, yeah, we will likely get all these patches in place because community ratings uh, look pretty good. And, yep. uh, um, yeah. We still have a chance to land more fixes. Yeah. Um. In ad initial admin monitor support landed in the last weekly as well, I think. Mm -hmm. um, that's just one admin monitor and I've got five more locally that I just need to test. So I've, I've done the changes, but I just need to do some UI tweaks, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so do you need any help with reviews from the team? Um, yeah, I need um, mm -hmm. log recorders reviewed and agent and cloud configuration reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, I think Daniel started on, started on the log recorder one. He started reporting a couple for unrelated issues he's found while he's been doing it. Yeah. What if uh, we create a, so currently you track changes in the Jenkins Jira, right? Um, I most, yeah, they're in, they're in Jenkins Jira, but I, I mostly just track them by searching for system in the filter here. Would it um, make sense to create a project on GitHub? Yeah, I could do, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, might as well. Okay, then let's just do it. Because uh, it might be useful since uh, it implies changes across multiple repositories. Yeah. And uh, not everybody uses Jira nowadays. So, JEP224, system uh, read. Okay. And I will also have something to be linked from the roadmap or from mm -hmm. the job. Okay, so public linked repositories. Uh, can okay, we, yeah, well, uh, we will fix it later. I should have, uh, okay, I'll uh, fix it later, but uh, after the meeting, but we have a project, so uh, anyone is welcome to just uh, link it. Uh, I will at all uh, configuration as code uh, developers as project maintainers. Okay, thank you. Uh, on my side for system read permission, I finally updated my demo to support it. I, well, I just bumped uh, to the weekly, not even to the previous LTS. It works pretty mm -hmm. well. Though I also started reworking a plugin manager to use plugin installation manager tool because I want to use Dependabot and I don't want to use custom work packager in this demo. Uh, so yeah, it uh, takes a bit longer than I expected. So have you got a way of doing Dependabot with the plugin manager CLI? Uh, yes. Uh, so how it works, um, currently you can use Maven HPI plugin. Mm -hmm. uh, to dump a list of plugins. So I added uh, support of dumping plugins TXT from there. Uh, and then I just uh, generate uh, plugins TXT as a part of Docker build. Uh, okay. Do you have a link to that? Uh, to be published. Okay. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm interested in that. And I was thinking of whether custom wall packager was the right way or whether it was mm -hmm. too much effort. Yeah, so just to explain uh, some context about that. Uh, so there was a JEP for bill of materials, which we actually implemented. So now you can use maybe an HPI plugin to generate uh, a bill of materials. It's basically YAML. Uh, 
Uh, it's YAML in a different format, uh, which is not supported by plugin installation manager tool at the moment, uh, but still it's a, a foundation. And I just tweaked uh, the code to generate plugins TXT. In the future, we just uh, need to generate a uh, final uh, plugin installation manager for YAML, I believe. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we could probably just adjust the format that it takes to this if it's a standard, mm. if, if it makes sense. Okay, so I'll try to finish all my hackery by the next week. Uh, yeah, first, let's try to, uh, to integrate plugin bomb. Uh, but, well, it's basically based on plugin bomb anyway. Uh, so we just combines everything together without custom work packager. Okay. Uh, okay. And yes, yeah, speaking of bill of materials. We finally got past our last bomb blocker to now we're on to another one. Uh, yeah, so. <clears throat> so we got, we finally got up to 1.36 in the last bomb release. And now we can't go any further. Yeah, so it's a pain. Uh, what is uh, the problem uh, in this iteration? PCT. As always, um, so is PCT it just doesn't. Um, so PCT doesn't. Up, so basically, in script security, mm -hmm. POM they have configurations code and configurations code test harness, um, and PCT is only updating the configurations code dependency and not the test harness one. Um, and the test harness is trying to load old the old snake YAML code, and it's conflicting. So to long didn't fit, we need to update PCT to overwrite Jenkins test harness as well, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the problem is that uh, the recent uh, update of Jenkins test harness also includes upgrade of HTML unit. So it's not going to be easy <laughs> because you update uh, Jenkins test harness uh, and after that uh, everything starts breaking because of binary incompatible changes. At least okay. it's my suspicion. I haven't had I haven't had any issues um, mm -hmm. on upgrading HTML units. Um, the only one is I had I had one fixed on the JDK tool plugin. So JDK tool plugin actually started working after upgrading it, whereas mm -hmm. it didn't work without it. Yeah, I'll try to release JDK tool uh, this week. I wanted to do it anyway because it still depends on some older plugins. So I'll bump uh, the core baseline and. Uh, release it just to clarify mm -hmm. yeah just to clarify it's it's here we were talking about the configuration as code test harness that was not yep. being updated yes configuration is code not the not the jenkins test harness oh sorry then i confused everything yes <laughs> it's okay uh bump of uh gcask uh, test harness right yeah uh so there was, there was, so there was either so there was either there was two suggestions. One was add a hook into PCT to um, update the JCAS test harness when updating the JCAS plugin. And the other suggestion was for PCT, if it finds that it's updating a property, to update the property rather than um, just replace the property with a specific version. Uh, yes, yeah, speaking of that, what we could do, uh, since JCAS is uh, widely used, we could just integrate it into plugin POM. Because for example, what we can do, uh, plugin POM includes dependency management section. Uh, so here we could add uh, basically a JCASC test harness. We could also add a property which defines its version, similar to how we do with other tools. And then uh, we can assume that all plugins which use JCASC test harness will, would be relying on the same uh, property name. And we write uh, that in PCT. Would it make sense? Yeah, possibly. The, the current guide is to that people include a property already for, for when they need the test harness. So mm. Well, the guidance is really is use bomb where you can and then don't add one. <laughs> True. The problem is we had, we had issues getting the latest bomb release out because we had to update everyone. So there, there is a, so the, possibly we can, yeah. Oh, no, it's just, just difficult having a breaking change like this. The snake YAML class path changes because norm, normally there wouldn't be a breaking change. 
So it would it would work even though they're out of sync. Mm. We might we would have had the same issue with the test jar, I assume, as well. Uh, yeah, and uh, so the only real uh, way to work it around is to, uh, uh, to shade uh, Snake YAML mm. uh, without using the plugin. But in, uh, in such case, you will be responsible for keeping it up to date. Which is quite complicated. Also, shading uh, such libraries is always a risk because something may start broken. Uh, I'm, I'm happy you're not maintaining it, but it's just good to we just need to get over this hurdle some way. Okay. So anyway, thanks a lot for working on this bomb, and finally we have uh, bombs for recent versions. Mm. Because uh, uh, before that we had uh, 176, so many projects moved on. And now we have uh, 196, right? And uh, no, we're up to two, 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 triple oh, two. Right. Oh, we're, we're, up, we're up to the latest. Yeah, I just uh, <laughs> missed that. Okay, so thank you. Mm, I will definitely update some components, for example, Jenkins file runner, because uh, they have been already migrated to this bomb. Mm, okay. So let's move on then. CI Jenkins IO is code. Do we have any updates there? Uh, the pull request was opened about, opened just over a week ago, I think. Um, Olivia was um, just completely focusing on the automated release though, so he, mm -hmm. he hasn't looked at it yet. Um, briefly mentioned it during the info meeting yesterday. <coughs> um, yes. Yeah. So yeah, I think uh, we will need to do that uh, better sooner than later. Mm -hmm. but yeah, correlates automation still uh, requires a lot of things to be done. Because, yeah, our new CI Jenkins IO instances is already, already configured this code, but for CI Jenkins IO, okay, we will mm. need to apply more patches. So maybe in the second part of May, we would finally get to that. Let's see. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot for staging that because it's definitely a great foundation work. Yeah, we should yeah, probably. I should probably separate out the other changes that. <laughs> yeah, and I will be able to finally kill my uh, development instance uh, for plug, uh, uh, pipeline libraries. Okay, so secret encryption uh, with external secret key, a quick update, no updates. Um, but yeah, I still intend to do that. And pretty much the same for configurator API. I tried uh, implementing that two weeks ago. I hit some issues with binary compatibility. I cannot uh, fix without reflection. So I'm back to the drawing board for a while. But yeah, one question uh, to team Joseph and others. Uh, so since we already updated core dependency, uh, what's the priority from your point of view? Do we still want to do that for the future? I don't know. Like most people seem happy enough bumping their core dependency as required. People, this seems to be less holdback and in, in increasing core versions recently um, from what I've seen among other plugin developers. It okay. used to be just to target the very lowest version, but people seem happier. Mm -hmm. um, we can always release lower versions as required as well. Um, I was wondering if one, I mean, just going back to the last one on the JCAS test harness for the bomb, we could release a version with a snake camel, um, um, snake camel dependency, a low enough version that script security could bump its core version to, and we could just hack our way around it. Um, mm, do you mind? It doesn't solve the problem, but it doesn't solve the PCT problem, but it would get us past this PR. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I just checked the stats uh, for configurations code. Uh, 82% is over 2.1764. So it's pretty high. I don't think that many people are afraid of bumping, to be honest, when they need to. Because we're only on 15% on 2221. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's a good one, one question about one question about that, Oleg. Yes. How I I think I'm missing something. How how is this related to a configurator API plugin? I mean, oh, well. Bumping or not? Uh, it's so we had a long discussion about uh, configuration call as code API. Because current situation, if you want to offer a new API uh, for other plugins, then these other plugins uh, will have to depend on the same version of the core as JCASC or higher. So it means mm -hmm. that uh, now we ship JCASC for the recent version. If we want to add a new API, for example, for configurators, then you will have to update other plugins uh, to be uh, compatible with this uh, new version. And uh, yeah, we don't have so many use cases for configurator API, but at the same time, uh, it's it might cause problems at some point if we need uh, to drastically extend it. For example, uh, we did some configurator API changes for the documentation generation when uh, we were working on um, the community bridge project with Slayden. And uh, there might be some similar changes uh, later. Okay, so the idea would be to have a configurator API plugin depending on a baseline and then configuration as code depending on another baseline? Yes. So configurator API uh, more or less uh, conservative and updating only when it's really needed. And the configuration as code plugin basically rolling as it's needed to consume new Jenkins core features. For example, new milestones, uh, system read permissions, and other stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. So so far there is not the uh, no demand in that, but yeah, I think that at some point it, uh, it will become a problem for us. Okay, yeah, all other plugins follow this approach, like pipeline, for example. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of pipeline API, something. So mm -hmm. plugins don't need to depend on the actual pipeline. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, anyway, it's this on my list. I'm not sure when. Um, yeah, I confirm that it's not that easy. Yeah, I've tried before. <laughs> Well, uh, when I did it uh, in 2017, <laughs> it was easier. Uh, but yeah, it, we, now it's uh, more complicated to resolve these interdependencies. <sighs> yeah, okay, we'll uh, deal with that somehow. Okay, I put some items like roadmap updates, uh, Zoom accounts, etc. Before we proceed to that, uh, do we have any technical topics so that we can s spend time on them? Adrian, Antonio, Sladen, are you fighting? No. No, no, nothing for me. Do the doc is uh, locked for editing. I mean, is it still publicly available to edit? Uh, it, docs? Yeah, can you see the docs? Uh, yeah, because I to, I to, yeah, I got to request it from the owner of the doc that I can edit. So, like, is it still locked for editing? Uh, let's see what are the permissions. Uh, so, what has happened? Actually, specific people can access. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I I guess that this document is still owned by Evelina, right? Mm. Yes. Can you change the who has access thing? Mm, yeah, I think so. That's really strange. Sorry. No worries. Maybe Evelina moved it uh, between uh, Google uh, Drive folders. I'm not sure because before that it was publicly visible. Thanks. Mm. Uh, says, any, says anyone at Prackman with the link can comment. 
<clears throat> uh, was there another option? I'm not sure whether it's even on Pragma account, but uh, yeah, so Google Doc permissions. Uh, agenda. So I'll take uh, an action item to contact Evelina. Mm, yeah, it's, or maybe it's still... somebody else could contact. Uh... Okay. Yeah, yeah, I pinged her in the Gitter channel, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure if she'll pick it up. Even after your change, it's still not visible. Really? Yeah, you, I think you just made it visible to people at Prakma. Oh. oh yeah. Sorry, it's my uh, mistake. No, oh, there we go. Comment. Yep. So, okay, should, anyway, should... we should probably move it out of uh, Pragma's uh, drive and you win. Yep. That's working now, by the way. Okay, so I'll take it. Okay, anything else before we press it? So we have 10 minutes left. Everything's fine. Okay, so yeah, quick update on the Jenkins roadmap. Uh, so yeah, tonight we have a first Jenkins roadmap meeting and we'll be working with special interest groups and projects to have it in place. So yeah, it's quite long and uh, we'll likely need to refactor it a bit. Uh, and there are some items uh, related uh, to JCASC. For example, we have JCASC plugin compatibility, also system uh, read permissions, uh, built-in plugin management. Uh, it's mostly plugin installation manager tool, uh, plus integrations and distributions. Uh, then uh, pluggable configuration sources, which we discussed before, uh, we put it in uh, the roadmap. Uh, and basically, that's it uh, about uh, JCASC right now. Obviously, other stories may include some bits, uh, but yeah, the number of stories here is quite limited. And if anyone uh, wants to put something else on the list, please do so. Because yeah, this list is community driven. Uh, Okay. Are we missing something important on this list? I, I don't know. There is a lot of things there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, specifically for JCAS. Yeah. So we will be socializing this roadmap later. It's still a work in progress. So there will be more items likely. Or less, hopefully less, but let's see. Okay. Mm, so, yeah, uh, the next one, uh, plugin compatibility highlights, I believe we discussed it in the beginning in the news section, changing Zoom account for meetings. Uh, so one uh, good news is that we finally have a specialized uh, account for Jenkins. What it uh, means uh, that, uh, yeah. So if you participated yesterday in the online meetup, you already used it uh, to run a Zoom or webcast. Uh, but yeah, what it practically means is that now we can manage permissions to this account on our own and we can grant uh, more access to more people. So for example- Live stream. Uh, hmm? Live stream. Yeah, live stream as well. <laughs> But yeah, specifically for SIG meetings, I think it makes sense to migrate uh, to the new account as well, uh, starting from the next meetings. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it saves having to manually upload the YouTube video later. Mm -hmm. So is anyone against? Yes. How do, how do you get access to it? Hmm? How, do, how do I get, is it possible for other people to get access? Uh, it's so one of uh, the reasons. Uh, so what is in my plan uh, to write a new job for Zoom account? Mm. Uh, but basically all sub-project leaders, SIG leaders, etc., are eligible to access that. So similar to, uh, to YouTube. Uh, and we, uh, once it's approved, I believe that we can just un transfer access to your team. <clears throat> Okay, so 
I wanted to ask Joseph as well, but he disappeared. So yeah. anyway. Okay, so online meetups and blogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, question uh, to everyone. Uh, we have some new features about JCask. Would uh, anyone be interested to share something? Because yeah, we are looking for content. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning to write a system read blog, um, both like a, both users and developers side of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if there is any topic that requires a blog, maybe even I would be interested in contributing. So just do let me know. I mean, no. Yeah. Well, basically, any topic you would like to speak about is a good opportunity. Okay. So, yeah, just think uh, what's okay, okay, I will. I'll think about it. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, it's community driven. We definitely do not assign tasks to create something. Uh, yeah. But if somebody is interested, yes. And uh, specifically about uh, Jenkins and Kubernetes. So, we run a series of online meetups. And if somebody wants to present how to use JCast together with Kubernetes, uh, it, it's more than welcome. Yeah, I've also been planning to write a blog on Jenkins and Kubernetes with JCast and Helm. And mm -hmm. I guess I have started writing it actually. Mm -hmm. I think I was writing it a couple of weeks ago. Great, thank you. And yep. Yeah. If anyone wants else uh, wants to create something, just do that. My problem was there was just so much content and you needed to split it down into multiple posts. <laughs> uh, I have the same problem. Yep. Sometimes it works. Okay, so that's it. Any other topics for the, uh, today's uh, meeting? Oh, I see really in the list. Okay, if there is no other topics, we can just close it down. Okay. okay. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah. perfect. So, Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Cheers. I'll stop Bye. the recording.